we've come to phylum arthropoda, also an ectosozoan phylum like the nematodes, so they do have to molt in order to grow. Nematodes were a huge group, but phylum arthropoda is even larger. They are by far the most successful animals. They are There are well over 1,200,000 documented species, though the true number is much larger. Some estimates put it at 30 million. Um, that might be high, but regardless, there is a whole heck of a lot of arthropo arthropods. So they affect all aspects of other organisms' life, including human life. They live in every habitat, right? So they help us by pollinating crops, they serve as food, they compete with us for food, and they can also cause diseases. In general, arthropods are small, right? Not always, but for the most part, they're small organisms. They all have exoskeletons that are made up of chitin and protein, very rigid protective structures. And like the nematodes, they all exhibit ecdyses, molting, in order to grow. There are four extant classes of arthropods, the chalicerata, or chalicerates, the crustacea, crustaceans, hexapoda, the insects, and myriapoda, millipedes and centipedes. There's also a fifth extinct class called the trilobites, which are really cool, well-preserved arthropods that show the same characteristics that extant arthropods have. <coughs> this table from your book summarizes the four main groups of arthropods. Chalicerata are named for the chalicerae fangs, which are the first pair of appendages that they have. Examples are spiders, mites, ticks, scorpions, horseshoe crabs. Crustacea are crustaceans. These guys have mouth parts that are mandibles, first pair of appendages, and they are characterized by having appendages that are biramous or double branched. They also have two pairs of antennae. These include lobsters, crabs, and shrimp. Hexapoda are insects. Um, here, mouth parts are also mandibles. They have three tagma or body regions, head, thorax, and abdomen, one pair of antenna, and uniramus, single branched appendages. These include beetles, bees, wasps, flies, uh, true bugs, grasshoppers, butterflies, moths, a lot of diversity here. And then myriapoda, these guys have mouth parts that are mandibles. They also have just one pair of antenna. They have lots of segments that are pretty similar to each other. And like the hexapods, they have um, uniramus appendages. These are our centipedes and millipedes. So this uh, graph here shows you just how diverse uh, or really abundant phylum arthropoda is. Right, about two thirds of all named species are arthropods, which is crazy. About 80% of those arthropods are insects, right? So that's all these right here. And then of those insects, about half are beetles. So there's a whole heck of a lot of arthropods, there's a whole heck of a lot of insects. And of those insects, the beetles are especially abundant. Why are they so successful? Right? There are some characteristics that really stand out as contributing to their success. Number one is segmentation. <clears throat> um, so like other organisms, like the annelid worms, arthropods are segmented, but these segments have been more specialized in arthropods. They have been fused in many cases into tagmata, fused specialized segments. The classic um, scenario here is to have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, but in some groups of arthropods, the head and thorax is fused into a cephalothorax, or prosoma. <clears throat> Number two, we got the exoskeleton. Right? This is going to be a major protective structure. It protects against water loss, which really makes these arthropods um, adapted to terrestrial living. 
but it also protects against predators and it provides an attachment point for mussels. There is a cost to the exoskeleton and that is the restriction to mobility and the restriction to size, right? As an arthropod grows, the exoskeleton eventually becomes too heavy for the arthropod to carry. So this is why we don't see large arthropods. Jointed appendages help out with this mobility issue, right? Um, these are going to be modified into a lot of specialized structures like the antennae, the mouth parts, the wings. Uh, the wings have allowed arthropods to colonize the air, but there's also a lot of other structures that allow for efficient methods of locomotion in water and on land. These jointed appendages can be extended and retracted. All arthropods are coelomates with advanced body systems. They have, uh, for respiration, a system of trachea and spiracles. We can see the spiracles right here. These are holes that open up at the surface of the body. They're attached to a system of tubes that uh, allow for diffusion to take place. Arthropods can also have gills if they're aquatic. For excretion, Arthropods also have an advanced system here. A lot of them have what are called malphysian tubules, which you see down here, for creating a very uh, concentrated waste that helps them conserve water. For a nervous system, these guys do have a brain, right? They have um, ganglia that are fused at the anterior end, right here. Right? And then they also have ventral ganglia that are present in each segment um, and allow for control of that particular segment and the structures present there. To go with that fairly complex nervous system, we have complex sensory um, organs like compound eyes. Right? Arthropods, many of them have compound eyes. This produces a mosaic image, a pattern of light and dark dots or spots which um, is great at detecting motion. Right? These are called omotidia. So each individual cell or visual receptor is a omotidia. This is what makes uh, things like flies so hard to kill. Right? You may have noticed trying to swat a fly, it's, they kind of know you're coming before you even know you're coming. And it's due to these are omotidia organized into these compound eyes. Some arthropods also have, or instead, or have instead, simple eyes, or ocelli, which are just good for distinguishing light from dark. And a lot have both, a lot of arthropods have both of these. As you can see in this diagram, right? Ocelli and compound eyes on this arthropod. This diagram shows you what a compound eye looks like. It's detail, right? So this is, oops, Right here, um, our compound eye, if you were to look at it even more closely, you would see that it's composed of a ton of these omatidium, which are individual photoreceptor units. So looking at these four extant classes of arthropods, class Calicerata, there's about 70,000 species of these guys, so very abundant include spiders, ticks, mites, and scorpions, daddy long legs, horseshoe crabs, and sea spiders. Most of these guys are terrestrial. Many of the familiar organisms are terrestrial, but there are a fair number of fresh water, especially mites, and there's a few marine species as well. Most are carnivorous, though they can be herbivorous or have a liquid diet. Calicerata is named for the calicerae that these organisms possess. These are the anterior most appendages and are often modified into fangs or pinchers. Calicerates also have pedipalps. This is the second pair of appendages. They look like little miniature legs, but instead of locomotion, pedipalps are often used in copulation and in sensation. They can also be used in prey capture. Behind the pedipalps, all calicerates have four pairs of walking legs. The body is divided into two tagmata. The anterior prosoma or cephalothorax is where you're going to find all the appendages, the 
chalicera, pedipalps, walking legs. And then the posterior epistosoma or abdomen is where the reproductive organs are found. So here on the right, you can see some examples of chalicerates, the tick up at the top here. Um, these are really efficient carriers of disease, unfortunately. So that's really how we see them affecting humans most often. They attach very firmly onto their host and feed slowly, usually going unnoticed. So that gives them plenty of time to spread Lyme disease, which is a bacteria, or Rocky Mountain spotted fever, another bacterium. Mites, which is below the tick. Right, mites right here. Um, in general, they're mostly harmless, though they can cause diseases, allergies, or be parasites. The house dust mite here um, can cause allergies and asthma in humans. It's uh, actually the number one cause of non-seasonal allergies. They produce digestive enzymes in their droppings because they actually consume their droppings later, and those enzymes can trigger allergies and asthma. This last one down here is the horseshoe crab. This is a living fossil, older than the dinosaurs. And it has a little bit atypical body structure uh, compared to the other chalicerates because it is adapted for living in water. So 10 legs instead of eight. Um, the horseshoe crab is very important ecologically because the eggs are an important source of food, especially for migratory birds. And then for us humans, um, the blood is harvested in order to test pharmaceutical equipment, equipment for toxins, which has actually put the horseshoe crab at risk. So more synthetic methods of uh, accomplishing the same thing are being looked at now. Maybe the most famous and well-known chalicera is the spider, right? And these uh, couple spiders, they're both present in Louisiana. They are both can be fatal to humans, though it is rare. The black widow over here on the left, this, um, this actually is several species are black or brown widow widows, but they all have this red hourglass on their abdomen. The bite is rarely fa fatal and usually just given in defense. They have an interesting behavior where the female will consume the male after reproduction. Brown recluse is a light brown color with this dark olive, um, dark olive or brown violin structure on the cephalothorax. Unlike other spiders that look very similar to it, the legs are not spiny or banded. Bite is very, very uncommon. It's often misdiagnosed. Um, and usually it's not serious, but it can lead to um, uh, death of tissue and also it can be fatal. So arthropods to watch out for. Now we're running a little short on time. We're already at 13 minutes. So I'm going to stop here and we'll take up with class crustacea in the next part of this chapter.